I just so specifically when you agreed to do this, I was like, is she so cool? <laughs> That's awesome. What's up, guys? Amanda Smith here with Jessica Blaylock. Thank you so much for making time to chat with me today. Uh, you already said you had a classic Blaylock moment, so I thought there's many more of those throughout your time together. <laughs> yeah, classic Blaylock moment. Uh, my strong suit is not technology, so I already accidentally took a Skype photo of you without even realizing it. So it's I super cute. Think though. I want to share that you. with everybody. I got yeah, maybe see. maybe it can be a new profile pic. I don't know. <laughs> It ain't good, guys. So you currently work for Fox Sports Florida, covering hockey and Major League Baseball. And I'm going to be honest here, I Googled you. And I came across an interview you had done where you said that you now work in two sports that you really never imagined you'd be covering. Yeah. Why did you feel that way? And now what have you learned? Well, it's funny. Growing up in North Florida, hockey is, I hate to use the word, irrelevant but it, it just is not one of the most popular sports in north florida even though we have two hockey teams in the state of florida you know so growing up in jacksonville college football is huge and the nfl obviously uh, with the jaguars and my dad loves college basketball so you know i fell in love with gator basketball uh, over the years and so growing up I knew I wanted to be a reporter in middle school. I actually took a journalism class in seventh grade and I fell in love with it. And then when I was 17, which is almost 20 years ago now, which is crazy, um, but the Florida basketball team that went to the championship game and lost to Michigan State, I just became enamored with that team and, and thought to myself how much fun it would be to cover a team like that. And that's when I decided that I wanted to do sports reporting. So I went to the University of Florida and obviously UF, you know, I was there for Spurrier's last season. That was my freshman year. And so obviously college football is huge. And, and again, Florida basketball had a lot of success over the stretch while I was there. So I just always envisioned myself being a college basketball or a college football reporter and just throughout the years you know the way that it worked out to to where i'm now starting my fifth season of major league baseball and i just put a wrap on my fourth season of hockey i have just absolutely fallen in love with those two sports and they have been the most fun i've ever had in my career um and I've been blessed enough to cover all four major sports in some capacity. I started out covering the NBA, spent five seasons covering the Magic. I worked for a sports talk radio station in Jacksonville where I covered the NFL. So I covered the Jaguars for five seasons. Um, I can genuinely say I never would have expected growing up with kind of the, the different sports passions that I had that baseball and hockey would ever be my two favorite sports, but I would be completely content at this point in my life covering baseball and hockey for the rest of my career. It's been so much fun. You know, and I think that there's a handful of incredibly talented, capable broadcasters who have never played the sports that they now cover. What advice would you give to someone looking to report on games that they've never physically been a part of? Listen, listen, listen do your research, ask questions. I mean, it's so funny. Yesterday, um, I was standing in the dugout at SunTrust Park. We were playing our series finale against the Braves, and I was talking to our pitching coach for the Marlins, Mel Stottlemyre Jr., and just asking him questions, um, you know, about conversations that he has with pitchers, discussing certain pitchers around the league and why they're so good at what they do. And I mean, you really hit on it. I will never know. I will never know what it's like to throw a slider. I will never know what it's like to be out in the net trying to stop a puck that's coming at my face at 100 miles per hour. You know, I never played hockey. I never played baseball. The most experience I ever had with that was trying out for my softball team in middle school in seventh grade and not even <laughs> making it through the first round of cuts. I mean, it was terrible. Um, so I'll never know what it's like to actually be in that moment. But what I can do is ask questions. 
I can listen to, you know, our pre-game analyst and our in-game analyst and what they're saying about the game and what they're saying about plays and, and really just having conversations with guys and asking them about, you know, why they do things a certain way or their game preparation or what moments are like, you know, what it's like to go to the plate. Curtis Granderson the other day, it's a one run game. He gets called in off the bench to go and pinch hit and he hits a home run and ties it up. What's that moment like? What's, what is your, you know, what, what kind of mindset are you taking into that at bat? What does it take to be successful in that moment? I mean, those are things that I would never know, but I can ask, Curtis to tell me and, and kind of learn from what he says. So I think a big part of it is just really always being on top of your game when it comes to preparation, always, you know, asking questions, never being afraid to ask questions um, and, and really genuinely listening to the information that you're giving, that you're given and soak it up and absorb it and, and try and grow it in future conversations. And I think those two things you just mentioned kind of go hand in hand with each other because the preparation of something takes the nerves out because right. then you just, you know, the information, it's just a matter of saying it. Right. Right. So yeah, that, that to me has been the biggest thing throughout the course of games. I will always listen to, um, you know, my play by play, my analyst, and I'll take notes throughout the whole game, whether it's hockey, whether it's baseball, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whatever it may be. And a lot of times that's where I get post-game questions from um, or, you know, intermission interviews. Uh, I'll listen to what Denny Popkin says about certain plays and I'll try and follow up with players in the game and so forth. I mean, there's just there's so many things that you can really pick up on just from genuinely listening. I think that's one of the biggest things. I'm doing it right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, and it's a, it sounds crazy, but it's a tough quality to hone in this business because I know for me, the first couple of years, I was always so nervous when mm -hmm. I was doing interviews, especially with professional athletes. Um, and I would be so worried about what my follow-up question was that I wouldn't take the time to listen to what answer I was given for my first question. So I would do an interview and I would walk off and someone would ask me, you know, oh, what did that guy say to you about this? And I'd be like, oh my God, I don't know. What did he say to me about it? You know, I, I mean, you just, it's, a, it's a quality you really have to work on. I mean, it sounds silly and it shouldn't be difficult, but it's amazing how, how much you have to work on it. Yeah, you know, and really, really train yourself to instead of conducting an interview, being so formal, just learning how to listen and have a conversation with people. I think that's a huge thing. And I think when you when you go from more of like a rigid interview to just, hey, I'm having a conversation with a guy about something, it it puts them at ease a little bit more and just makes it seem more natural altogether. And you had mentioned your time working in radio and you were actually an influence in spearheading the first shout out to you lady all female sports talk <laughs> radio show in the country but, <laughs> but how would you describe from that experience using your voice in a way that impacts innovation well i think a big thing in that was I have to give a lot of credit to 1010XL 92.5 FM in Jacksonville, our general manager, Steve Griffin, uh, Frank Frangi, all the guys that are a part of that radio station for really believing in our capability as women to do a radio show and to talk the NFL and to talk football. Um, it was awesome to have that kind of support um, to see that there were people who believed we could actually do it. And it was kind of crazy because we started doing that show. It was called Helmets and Heels. It's still on um, in Jacksonville and still has a wonderful uh, group of, of women who, who do the show. Um, but it was funny because that we started doing that radio show a couple of months before the TV show, I think on CBS. Uh, what was it called? We Need to Talk. And oh. it was all women. Yeah. So it was kind of crazy how all of that kind of came out right around the same time. Um, but it was, it was awesome to be able to, to do something like that. And, 
And I think it was kind of a combination of seeing the sport from a completely different perspective. You know, we would have coaches on, we would have players on um, to kind of go through the X's and O's stuff. And then we would also kind of bring in that, that personal connection, almost, I don't want to say like, oh, putting a female touch on it. But I mean, you know how women are. We're very big on relationships and we're very big on just like, we want to get to know these guys more as just players. We want to get to know them, you know, their, their husbands, their, their fathers, their brothers, their sons, their, you know, they're all of these things that are more than just their position. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, getting, getting to kind of combine that X's and O's part with what made these players people was was kind of a cool combination of all of it and and we would get into other we would get into other topics around the nfl we didn't just deal with the jaguars um and it was also really interesting to see how even as women we had different opinions on different topics so to be a part of that was it was just a really cool experience. But again, I think it goes back to having the support of the radio station and having people who believed in us that we could do that. It's just bad. Just bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll put a little sensor beep over myself. every time. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So I want to play just a really quick game that I made up because I'm my executive producer here. Which is awesome. So you can pretty much do whatever you want to do, which is also bad. Ah! I'll put a sensor beep on you too. <laughs> okay, so this is just going to be one word because you work in hockey and baseball. Okay. So we're going to go describe the difference in one word. Whew. I know, right? It sounds easy, but it's hard. Players. Um... If you need two words, I'm lenient. Blue collar. Fans. Dedicated. The mascots. Insane. (laughs) How about our food options? Delicious. An overall atmosphere. Wild. You did great. It's funny sometimes that, I'm like, is, that is really hard because it's so funny. If you gave me a ton of words, I could easily describe the difference, but to have to put it kind of all in one word. Oh man. Gotta get your noggin going. I know. I know. This one makes me think this is good for me. <laughs> You're welcome. No, I'm just <laughs> this is going to make me better. I promise exactly. you. I'm here for you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we had some awesome fan questions for you this week, so I want to get to as many as we can. This makes me so excited. Yeah. Like, people actually had questions. Oh, there were some great ones, too. I am not interesting at all. Are we going to get any questions from people? That is a lie, because I find you very interesting. And actually, (laughs) funny, quick side story. I was trying to find it, but I'm pretty sure, like, five years ago, I, like tweeted at you I'm pretty sure and you like favorited my tweet I was trying to find it because I couldn't remember what it said but it meant like the world to me and really (laughs) that's really sweet well I'm I'm super humbled just that people are so supportive of me and Marlins fans and Panther fans have always been so kind and so generous to me and I I don't take for granted every kind word that people tweet or come up to me at the ballpark or come up to me at the hockey arena. Like I just, it means so much to me and I I don't ever want to take any of that for granted. So even for you to say me favoriting a tweet, like meant the world to you, that that's so cool. And that makes me feel so good. Okay. So my guy, Caden Delisa, I just thought I would help him out here. Wants to know if you will take a selfie with him. Yes. Will he be at Marlins Park or one of the ballparks? I would hope so. That I will be on the road for? Okay. You I will. Tell him I'm totally down. Let me know where he is, what his section is, and I will find him at some point this season. Happy for you, Caden. And You'll I will look, you with- tell him I'll look a little bit better than this situation that's going on right now. Look great. <laughs> So, moving on. Rose Ann Sapia would like to know, how do you handle covering two sports when seasons overlap? 
So uh, that's a great question. Um, and that's another thing I'm really grateful for the fact that I get to work throughout the course of the year because yeah, baseball literally goes right into hockey and hockey goes right into baseball. Um, March is always crazy because regular season hockey is still in full swing and we always tend to have a lot of home games in the month of March, but spring training is also a hundred percent in session. So there was one day this past March where I was in Jupiter at seven o'clock in the morning for baseball interviews. And then I was at the BB and T center at five to get ready for a seven o'clock puck drop for the Panthers. <laughs> Um, so to answer that question, how do I make it happen when the two sports overlap? Um, I run on a lot of coffee, a lot of caffeine, uh, but I just remind myself also to how lucky I am to do what I do. And um, those days that are exhausting, those days where I feel like my mind is just going to break down, those days where... You know, I'm driving to Jupiter at 5.30 in the morning and I'm getting to the bb t Center at 5.30 at night. Um, I just remember I, I, there's nothing else that I would rather be doing. Um, but yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of caffeine, a lot of remembering to be grateful, and then a lot of leaning on awesome coworkers uh, for us to both, both kind of balance out the schedules. Those are the days you get yourself a Fenty. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Or what's what's the new one that Starbucks came out with? That's like even larger oh than the Fenty, like the trend, 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 trend. Or, yeah. So I'm like, can I have uh, two of those? One for the morning, one at night. T underscore Harris underscore eighteen says, "What is your favorite road city?" Ooh, that's another good one. Um, you know what? For baseball, I love. San Francisco and I love New York obviously and even though we only play the AL East you know every three seasons I love Boston Boston is hands down one of my favorite cities in the country um, because I love sports I love history and I love beer and I mean Boston has all three at <laughs> like the highest level possible so uh, yeah I would go with Boston New York and West Coast San Francisco and San Diego. San Diego is unbelievable. And it doesn't matter what time of the year we go. It's 70, sunny and beautiful, which is amazing. What are your feelings on Chicago? <clears throat> I like Chicago as well. Actually, you know what? I was in Chicago with hockey this past December and had an unbelievable dinner at Gibson's and it's just, it is a really cool city and we get to go there for baseball obviously as well. We'll actually be there twice this season since we're playing the AL central. Um, so yeah, Chicago is, is pretty epic too. And Wrigley. I'm a Chicago gal. So yeah, I have Wrigley is just you know, sweet. I mean, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Chicago is a okay in my book. Brandon C Smith five. Says, how big was the transition from being on sports radio to being a sideline reporter? You know what is funny is actually I did television before I did radio. Um, I was covering, I started out with Fox Sports Florida covering high school basketball state finals. That was my first ever on camera assignment. Um, and then a month later, I was so lucky to get the opportunity to start covering the NBA, a handful of NBA games. And that is kind of what led to the radio gig. Um, and so it, it wasn't so much transitioning from TV reporting to radio. I would say that ultimately the way the two worked together was radio made me much better on television. And I would advise anyone who's getting into journalism even if you want to be on TV, if you get offered a radio gig, take it because radio teaches you honestly, just how to talk, you know, uh, with radio, you have certain times that you take breaks and, you know, you may go into a 12 minute segment and have what you think is plenty of content and then realize that you've run through it in seven minutes. And now you have another five to fill. Well, you just have to learn how to how to talk. And I really think that being in sports talk radio 
made me infinitely better on television because I, I just learned really the art of conversation and, and the art of just, okay, when things go wrong, you know how to handle it better. I remember I was hosting a, a baseball pregame show by myself in New York um, for a game against the Mets and everything that could go wrong did go wrong. My earpiece was going in and out. My monitor stopped working, so I couldn't see anything I was supposed to be talking about. I threw up to our guys in the booth for their segment. Their camera wasn't working, but I didn't know because my monitor was out. So, so literally, my producer's like, you know, talk, Layla, talk, talk. We're trying to get things back. We're trying to get, just fill right now. So I'm like, okay, let's see what we can talk about. And I, yeah. I ended up talking about our starter and just kind of his numbers against the Mets and things like that. And, you know, it, it was obviously a lot of things going wrong at one time, but you just have to make it work in the moment, especially because nobody at home knows all of the things that are going wrong. But I just remember thinking in that moment, man, I'm so glad that I learned in radio, the art of just really sometimes learning how to fill time, um, because I think that directly made me better in that moment to handle something like that. We have one final question from Anthony Stevens, 14. Marlins have new food options. What's been your favorite? Ooh, Pincho Factory. What is there, that? Even? I it's so good. They've got great burgers. They've got these meat skewers and I love sweet potato. They have these sweet potato tater tots that <laughs> are just off the charts. So I'm going to go with Pincho factory. Um, but there are really, you know, I haven't even had a chance to try everything yet. It, it, that is one thing that is really cool about Marlins park this season is that they have brought in a, a lot of local South Florida businesses uh, as far as their food choices. So you've got Miami's best pizza, you've got, ceviche you've got a uh, pincho factory you've, you've just got all these really cool places that scream south florida so i'm pumped about trying all the new things but for right now as far as my favorite i would go with pincho factory all right anthony get on over there get yourself some meat yeah, try the tots <laughs> and the tots and the tots thank you so much for taking time to talk with me it was so much fun getting to know you uh outside of twitter so this is so much better. <laughs> anytime, anytime. I, I'll be more than happy to come back on. Ah, I'm gonna take you up on that. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a follow up conversation. Maybe maybe towards the end of baseball when we're about to gear up for hockey again, or uh, even before that. Anytime, I'm down. I'm here for it as always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. For Jessica Blaylock, I'm Amanda Smith. We'll see you next time.